Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be setting up basic IK and movement for our little guy here. And we're going to be working through some of the adjustments to the limb code as well as the limb placement code. And a little bit of work on the AI as well and setting up the character mesh. That being said, this video did run a little bit long so I am going to be cutting it into two parts. And so we'll get through the limb placement controller and then we'll come back around for the limbs themselves next week. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. So we're going to hop over to the cultist prefab over here. You can see a couple things have changed. We went ahead and broke out the roller ball and put it as a child of a new node 3D, which we're just referring to as cultist. And then we also went ahead and drug in the character mesh here for the cultist body. Now the character mesh is pretty bare bones, so we're going to have to get in on that. But let's go ahead and go down to the changes that we've made. So as you can see, we went ahead and pulled out all the limbs and the limb placement code from the rollerball. And we also created a couple new nodes here. You can see we have the target containers for the IK, as well as the actual targets themselves. You'll also notice that the rotation on them are a little bit different than their parents. Each one of these has been adjusted for its particular bone and the rotation in order to make the feet stand on the ground and the hands stand on the ground. And that's going to vary based off of your rig. So you will have to make these adjustments yourself. I'll show you in the next next video how to make these adjustments, but be aware that the exact rotations of these nodes won't really help you in your project unless you're using the same exact skeleton. So let's go ahead and dive into the cultist body. As you can see, we've got pretty much nothing here. Let's go ahead and select the skeleton 3D, and then we'll select this little menu at the top and create a physical skeleton. Now you see a lot of things appear here. This is how you do ragdolls if you want to do that. We're not actually going to be broaching that subject just yet. I initially tried to use an active ragdoll system, but you can see the results on screen and it wasn't exactly ideal. So I ended up going in a bit more hard-coded manner, but we are going to need it later, and we also are going to be using it to find out what the IDs of specific bones are, specifically the chest. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all these. I'm going to remove all the fingers because we don't need those, and I'm also going to rename them to something a little bit more human readable. All right, so we got everything renamed here. We do need to set the collision layer on these bones to something other than what they are currently set to, which is the default. Otherwise, we're going to get some odd results. So let's go ahead and select all of these. So we'll set the collision layer to enemy body, as I've created names for the different collision layers, which is number three. Now, we do also need the IKs. So we can go ahead and right click and set add child node. We'll use the skeleton IK 3D, and we'll just go ahead and make four of those. We'll rename each one of these for the different IKs. And we're going to go ahead and set up the root bones and the tip bones. For the arms, I found that using the upper body as the root bone and the hand as the tip bone worked out just fine. Note, don't use the shoulder or rather the clavicle bone here as the root bone. It just doesn't seem to work, and I don't think it actually works on pretty much any biped character. It just looks weird. We are going to go ahead and use the magnet, but everything else we can just set as default. All right, and we're going to use the thigh and the foot for the various feet IK. And that's pretty much it for the cultist body. Now, if we hop over to the cultist prefab, we can go ahead and see all of our changes there. We'll just collapse that for now. We'll come back to the actual IK solvers next week, but we can go ahead and dive into the limb placement controller right now. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and create a couple new variables. We're going to need the skeleton as well as the chest bone. So that's going to be a skeleton 3D and we'll be using a physical bone 3D for the chest bone. The reason why we're actually referencing the physical bone is we can call get bone ID on the physical bone in order to get the actual ID. I just found I had a lot of issues trying to manually input that. So this is just a lot easier. Now, besides that, we're also going to need the chest target point as well as the chest target container, which are both node 3Ds. And we need a couple variables for settings here. So let's go ahead and step through these. Jump velocity is going to be the velocity each one of the limbs will impart onto the roller ball whenever they are moving, as well as step bounce power being the velocity upwards. This gives a little bit of bounce. If we put too much bounce into it, it's, they all end up bouncing around very comically. And I may actually do it later just for playing around. But for now, just a little bit of bounce helps sell the movements. Now, to further that, we also go ahead and bounce the visuals of the torso without actually messing with the rollerball, and we're going to be using the torso bounce visual strength. All that's going to do is for every limb that is not touching the ground, it's going to move the torso down just visually 
by that much. So it'll end up being like 0.1 or something like that. The torso lerp speed is going to be the speed at which we blend between our current of vertical for the torso and what the target based off of the bounce visual strength is. And then our rotation lerp speed is going to be for the actual rotation of the torso in world space. And that's going to just help smooth things out. Otherwise it looks a little bit glitchy. Now down here on the enemy body, we currently are using rigid body 3D. We are going to go ahead and need to change that to a new type of basic enemy navigation agent. And for that, we do have to go ahead and extend the basic enemy navigation agent with a class name to make it a global class. This is just so that later on we can access a variable for the velocity. So we'll go ahead and leave that right there. We are going to need to modify the body width, however. We're going to be adding two new variables, one for the shoulder body width as well as the bottom body width. This way we can actually offset the origin of that ray cast to give the shoulders a bit more width. And then down here, we're also gonna create a couple private variables. The first one is going to be for the current torso offset. And once again, that's going to be based off the torso bounce visual strength. And that's just going to be a vector three. And then the other one is going to be for the chest bone ID. Let's actually move that down just below last velocity. We're going to actually move that down just below last velocity. So let's go ahead and dive into the red function. First off, we can go ahead and get the chest bone ID using the chest bone dot get bone ID. And down in physics process, we can go ahead and call. We can go ahead. We can go ahead and adjust. We can go ahead and adjust the vertical offset. And to do that, we're first going to have to count how many limbs are not touching the ground. So we'll create a new variable for count. We'll set it to zero. And then for each limb in current limbs, if the limb is currently traveling, we're just gonna add one to the count value. Then we can go ahead and set the current torso offset to vector3.down multiplied by the count value multiplied by the torso bounce visual strength. And this is just going to get our local space down vector of however much we need to move it. Then we can go ahead and call a function which doesn't exist called update body positions. And we'll go ahead and pass it the delta. So let's go ahead and create that function. We'll set that to a float value. Now let's go ahead and step through the update body positions. But so first off, we need to adjust the chest target container global position X and Z to the enemy body X and Z. And then we can go ahead and lerp the Y. Now, the way we're lerping here is first we take the Y axis that it currently is at and we blend it towards the enemy body global position plus the chest target container dot global transform dot basis dot Y. This is just our up vector in relation to our chest target container. So if the chest target is rotated 45 degrees to the right, instead of being straight up, it's going to be a little bit to the right. Now we multiply that by the current torso offset and then get the Y axis of that value. And we go ahead and blend towards that using the delta and the torso lerp speed. This means that our X and Z axis, the actual world space, we move around freely exactly where the rollerball is, but the Y is just bouncing the visuals, so we need that to be smoothed out. So next up, we'll go ahead and work on the rotation. So we'll create a new variable. This will be a type vector three, and we'll be equaling it to the chest target container dot global transform dot looking at. And what this does is it creates a duplicate transform of the chest target container looking at a target location. In this case, we're going to be passing it the current chest target location, adding to it the velocity that we're currently moving in, or rather the last velocity that we're moving in, which if you remember, will be the actual direction that we need to orient the upper body. Now we need an up vector for that. So we're going to say vector three dot back. If the absolute value of last velocity dot Y is greater than 0.99, or in other words, if it's directly up or directly down, we need the up vector for the looking at function to be a different vector than up. Otherwise, we just leave it as the vector up. Then we can go ahead and use the basis.get Euler to go ahead and get that target rotation in radians. Now to apply that rotation, we're gonna do something similar to what we did with the character rotation, where we use the lerp angle on the X, Y, and Z, and we're just going to lerp from the current global rotation to the target rotation on the X, Y, and Z. And we're using that torso rotation lerp speed multiplied by delta. Now, continuing on, we can go ahead and first off, we're gonna set the global position of the skeleton. The reason why we do this is if we don't keep the skeleton generally in the same location as the actual physical body, then we get some weird flickering as you can see right now. So we go ahead and move the global position of the skeleton to that location. Next up, we can go ahead and use the skeleton.setBonePosePosition function and set its location to skeleton.toLocal chest target point dot global position. Be mindful, you always have to set everything to local space of the skeleton in order for any of this to work. 
we can also set the bone pose rotation to the global transform dot basis dot get rotation quaternion of the chest target point. All the set bone pose rotation functions require a quaternion, so we're just going to be passing it in based off the chest target point. Here, we're not using the chest target container because the point is adjusted for the skeleton bone itself, and it will just help us make the thing look good. So above that, we can go ahead and create a new function. We're not going to use this just yet, but we'll use it next week. And this function will be called kickoff velocity. And all this is going to do is take a desired direction and a target point that is the origin of this velocity impulse. And we're going to apply that to the rollerball. But before we do that, we do want to go ahead and check to see if the desired velocity does not equal the current velocity. And the reason why is if the AI is currently moving in a direction that is opposite of its desired direction, we want to give it a little bit of a bump in its strength so that that way they can turn around a little bit easier. I found that they kind of drift away from the player and then drifted back towards them otherwise and it was a little bit unnatural for an actual creature so we go ahead and throw in an if statement to say if enemy body dot linear velocity and the dot product of that and the enemy body dot desired velocity is less than zero that is a dot product gives you a value of one to negative one one being these two vectors are exactly the same and negative one being they are exactly opposite so anything less than zero just means it's more than 90 degrees away from the target velocity then we'll go ahead and set the current velocity multiplied by the enemy body dot desired velocity dot length that is the amount of desired velocity we want multiplied by the velocity accounting multiplier if we didn't multiply it by the velocity accounting multiplier it just tended to go a little bit weird so this calms it down a little bit and then we can go ahead and just apply that impulse like we normally would we can use the enemy body dot apply impulse as it is still just a rigid body 3d and we can pass in that desired direction multiplied by the current velocity and use the global transform dot basis dot y of the chest target container multiplied by that step bounce power in order to give it a little bit of kick up. And for the origin point of that velocity change, we can go ahead and use the enemy body dot two local using the target point in order to put that into local space of the rollerball. All right, and there's a couple changes we want to make to the get target limb position. This is to account for that shoulder width that I was talking about before. We're going to go ahead and first off modify this first line. Instead of just setting it to the global position of the rollerball, we're also going to add to it the up vector from the chest target container. And this should be in the global transform. I actually made that mistake in the previous video as well. But the reason for this is so that we can get up above the torso. If the AI is right next to a rock or something, we want to be able to put that hand up on top of that rock next to it. So we'll go ahead and use that and we'll just have to reaccount for it down here. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and comment out these three lines as we'll be rewriting them. So first off, we're going to go ahead and create a couple variables here. One is going to be the center point, and we're going to set it first off to the target position, which has already been adjusted for the length of the body. And then we're going to create a new variable, which is going to be called side angle. And this is a normalized vector in whichever direction we are currently going. So if it's on the right side of the body, it'll be out to the right. If it's on the left side, it'll be out to the left. And to do this, we use the exact same way we did before, but instead of using the vector three dot up, we're gonna go ahead and use the global transform dot basis dot Y of the chest target container for that cross function. That way we can get out to the perpendicular angle based off of the chest rotation. So if it's rotated 45 degrees to the left, then the right arm would be up in the air a little bit. And then we go ahead and multiply that by the value of this, which is negative one. If the target limb is left and one if the target limb is right that way we can go ahead and account for which side we're on now what we're going to do is we're going to set the target position equal to the center point plus the side angle multiplied by the shoulder body width divided by two this gets our actual shoulder position and we'll go ahead and set that limb raycast global position to that shoulder position. So it's not set all the way out, it's just set as far out as the shoulder. And we'll probably have the shoulder be a fairly small number, whereas the bottom of the body width will be much larger. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and set the target position equal to the center point plus the side angle multiplied by the bottom body width divided by two. And then we're also going to go ahead and add to it the negative of the basis dot y of that chest target container multiplied by the ta target offset down. So that's going to be moving the hands down to below the character. And we're going to add one to it just to account for the additive that we put up there. And that should be pretty much it. The rest of it goes ahead and uses the target position to look at and nothing else should change. And that pretty much does it for the limb placement controller so next week we'll be going ahead and going over limbs as well as the basic enemy navigation as there's some changes we need to make to that as well 
So we'll get to all that next week. But for now, I wanted to thank everyone for watching. I also wanted to throw out a big thanks to everyone who's subscribed recently. We just went over a thousand subscribers, which is just a ridiculous number. And I very much appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for part two of this tutorial.